Welcome back to another powerful episode of the Power of Progression podcast. I'm your host, John Marone. I cannot wait to introduce you guys to this powerhouse woman. Her name is Jasmine Starr. Jasmine did what most people are actually scared of doing, which is betting on themselves. She actually dropped out of law school and she had a full ride to UCLA, all to pursue her dreams of being a photographer, even though she didn't own a camera. And in less than three years, she built an internationally recognized and award-winning business for photography. Now, in addition to growing her business, Jasmine began consulting with business owners across the country and showed them how they could use social media to build a brand and grow their business. She amassed over 700,000 followers on all her social media platforms and believes others could do the same exact thing and really pursue their passion. And guess what? live a life that they love and she's here to help you chase your dreams and create the life that you've always wanted to create miss jasmine star what's going on girl not i mean after that intro i just feel like i need a shadow box i need to drink some gatorade like i am ready for game day son yes let's go let's go thank you so much for joining me today um yeah i know you got a busy schedule and and i appreciate you jumping on here and uh, looking awesome as always. And I'm excited for you to drop some bombs of value to these guys. Uh, but first off, let's, let's kind of dive right in. You good with that? I'm great, I'm great. Good, good. So tell us a little bit more about Jasmine. Tell us before the photography, right? Let's, let's go back a few years and talk about Jasmine when she was younger, your upbringing. I know a little bit about it, but tell the audience. Yeah, so uh, current day Jasmine, why am I referring to myself in third person? No idea. We're just going to roll with it. So, <laughs> yes. Uh, yes. Current day me, I live in Newport Beach. I have amazing husband and business partner, and we have a dog. So I'm saying those things because one or two or both of them will be in the background. Like, it's just going to be the noise, and I'm just going to roll with it. Um, but I grew up in L.A. My father immigrated from Mexico and met my mom. Uh, who came here from Puerto Rico in East Los Angeles. They met and they decided to build a life together. Now they didn't have much and they struggled along the way, but through it all, I think my parents had the absolute best attitude and that like immigrant hustle. Uh, my dad took every job possible to make sure that there was food on the table. And oftentimes it wasn't quite enough. So we uh, thankfully live in the most beautiful, amazing country that has government of food assistance. Uh, we went to a great church where people would donate like clothes and Christmas gifts on our porch and just a series of miracles of us like growing up and learning how to take the little we have and make it work has later in my life set the foundation for me to know, believe and trust and preach that we all can take the little we have and make mountains and miracles from it. Yes. And, and I was watching you and listening to you on Ed Milet's podcast and his show. And I, and I love what you said. I had to put in the intro. But so you, you had this full ride to UCLA. Is, is that correct? I did. UCLA Law School. To be a lawyer. And then you decided to decide, you know, not go to school for eight years and, and or however long it may take us <laughs> to, to go all in on yourself. Why did you decide to do that? I think so many people that are watching and listening are scared to bet on themselves and that's why they take the safe route. Why did Jasmine decide to do it and how can others do the same and switch their mindset? You know, I think that in desperate times, people have to make desperate decisions and I was brought literally to my knees. I saw my mom battling a, like a, uh, battling her second round of brain cancer. And I think during that time, it forces you to reconcile how short life is. Because oftentimes we sit here and be like, okay, well, I'm not sure if I should do this because of all the things that could go wrong. Or I'm not sure if I could do this because I'm so responsible for all these other things. But when you like, when your face hits the ground or when you're looking at somebody you love, who's thinking back on her life about the things that she could have, should have, or wanted to do and didn't, it forces you to say, I have one choice to go down two paths and that is the safe and predictable route where I know I will be moderately happy and fulfilled or I can choose this wild unpredictable thing that gives me the chance to at least attempt to be a hundred percent passionate and happy and excited about the thing that I do and at that point in my life I was like I can't I do not want to die 25 years from now a lawyer in a corner office in downtown LA paying other people to live the life that I actually want to do and so as a result, I just said, I'm done. I'm done. I'm going to try this. And I could go back to law school, but I don't ever know if I'm going to have this chance on this day to do the thing that I want. Man, that's so powerful because 
And like I said, people are just worried and scared about the, the what ifs. And I was talking about the what if you not do it, I think you should be more scared of, right? Because you know what you're going back to. And if right. somebody's sitting there right now and, and they've had that self-valuation, like what's the first step for them to, to say, you know what, forget you nine to five or, you know, is there a process that you feel that like they should go through in order to make that transition? Do you say go all in? Give me some insight because people are like, I'm ready. Tell me, Jasmine, what is it? What do I need to do? Because I'm all in. It's going to be first important to understand. I am never an advocate to say, drop everything, run towards your dreams. I'm a huge advocate of run towards your dreams, but figure out what it's going to take for you to get there. And are you okay with those bargaining terms? So if you're at a point in your life and you're like, I am ready to move and do this, then my question will be first and foremost, ask yourself, are you okay when all the chips are down? What happens? So let's just say you decide like, you're like, I am ready. I am ready to become a, the music producer. I've always wanted to do great. So what is it going to take for you to do that? Do you leave your cubicle job and say, I'm going to double down. I have no income. Probably not. Or are you going to say, okay, I have to keep my cubicle job, but I'm going to DM a hundred local producers and I'm going to sweep their floors. I'm going to work late at night. I'm going to work on the weekends. I'm going to work during my lunch break. How can you facilitate both being responsible and also having a hustle? And then what happens if you decide to say, okay, I'm going to do this hustle. I've saved up six months of savings. If you decide to save it and use those six months of savings, if you get to month number six, what happens then? Mm. Are you going back what does that look like because when you can facilitate all the things that could possibly go wrong and you're still okay and you have still buffered and you have still made a plan of action to say okay these are things i need to do and you're okay with that you're ready dive in no more waiting but if you're kind of like oh, i'm just on a whim i think i should do this and you have no plan and you're not responsible you cannot look and say oh the universe wasn't on my side no, no, no. You weren't on the side of the universe that's told you get prepared before you do the dang thing. <laughs> yes. Yes. I love it. I love it. So you come from humble beginnings. So it's not like, you know, you, you were, were spoon fed and you had this, all this money to, just to not go ahead and go into the lawyer route and go to photography right. route. No. What, what sacrifices did you have to make in order to drop that and go over here and go all in? What are the major sacrifices that you had to make? Well, I think it's like really important to know that the, the most precious thing that I have, I realized when I was 25 years old, when I watched my mom be very ill, and the most precious thing that we have is not a zip code, it is not a car, it is not a jet, it is not a purse, it is not fancy jeans or shoes, it is time. Mm. The thing that we all want is time. And I thought to myself, I'm at a point in my life where I have time and every minute I'm going to be one of two things, being responsible or working towards my dream. There was no time to be like, oh, I'm gonna go to Ibiza. One, I couldn't afford to go to Ibiza. Like, I'm not, yeah, I'm gonna go to LA, I'm gonna go to West Hollywood and party tonight. No, there was no time to say like, oh, I'm just gonna sit here and watch like all five seasons of the show I really wanted to watch on like reality television. I only was able to sacrifice time because I didn't have money. My only option was, can I take this internship? Can I schlep bags? Can I sweep floors? Can I move one? Can I literally was being, I would hear that people are like moving offices or studios. Like, hey, I'll go there. I'll help you move. I don't need any money. I don't need any payment. I just want to see what you do. I wanted a seat at the table. And in order for me to do that, I just had to hustle and grind. And I think that what people have to give up with, their pride, their ego, time to play basketball late at night or go shopping with the girls or do like a four day bachelorette weekend. Hey, go to the one day bachelorette, but you don't need to be there all four days. There comes a sacrifice. Yeah. And put down the, the games on your phone, right? For the guys out there, no Madden, like, <laughs> like be serious about your goals. And, and you had said something about, you just wanted to see it at the table. Like you, you understood at that moment that you needed to get into a place where people were smarter than you and that you looked up to and idolized. Nowadays with social media, I think it's, it's pretty damn easy. I mean, I, I slid into your DMs with a video, right? Like that's, that's how this shit happened. And, and I think we have a huge opportunity with social media to not do the crazy amount of work that you did, but there's other ways to finesse it. And we'll jump into some tactics here in a second. But you talked about time. I think the most important time of our day are the first two when we wake up and then the two before we go to sleep. So what is Jasmine's First two when she wakes up and two before she goes to sleep looks like. They actually are quite, quite similar and they're also highly predictable. Like mm. I wake up every morning at 4.30. It's literally just the time my body wakes up. I don't have an alarm. I wake up, it's dark. 
I work very slowly. I don't like an alarm. I worked too long and like, like in a nine to five in a cubicle for me to like ever listen to another alarm again in my life. So now I wake up and I'm like ready to go. And then what I do every single morning is I drink a full liter of water. I pray, I meditate, I journal, I take a hot bath and then I start grinding. So about 35 to 45 minutes each morning, I have my routine and then I sit aside a time. My most creative time of the day is early. So what I'll do is I'll go through, I'll get busy work done, like a few hot emails that need to be responded to. Then I lay out my day. What do I need to do? How can I create? And then by 7 a.m. in the morning, I'm walking my dog. The last two hours of the day include walking my dog, planning what the next day is going to look like, and then really just enjoying, enjoying a great dinner with friends, family, quiet time, reading, and then checking out. I love it. Now, you're on social media all the time. Your social media, by the way, I love it. Like, I, I am a part of Social Curator, and I don't use it all the time, but I just get ideas from it, right? And the amazing, beautiful pictures and just being a part of that group. Uh, and, and I want to tell everybody what that is at the end because they all need to join it. It's, it's well worth, you know, the very small investment that it is. But you, you being on social media and being a social media star, basically, right, influencer, um, and, and that's what you do. How do you put down your phone? We, we become so addicted to that distraction and I need to know how you do it because if somebody ha doesn't have to do it all day, every day, like it's not their job, then, then you, if you could tell them how to do it, then there's no excuse why they can't put their phone down to be in the present moment and be focused. How do you do it? Okay. Can we put a pin on that? Cause we're going to go back to that question, but I have to go back and add a little clarifying point. Yes. Go. I am not a social influencer. And this mm. is how I defined a social influencer. A social influencer is somebody who gets paid to have third-party endorsements represented on their platform. And I have not, not ever taken or done or partaken in that because I understand that there's this thing called social equity, social collateral. And every time I talk about somebody else's business, it is one less opportunity for me to talk about my own. So mm. social influencers are selling somebody else's stuff. Myself, if I do have any influence, it's going to be an influence for value an influence for benefit, an influence for inspiration. So going back to that. First off, bombs are just dropped right there. I, <laughs> you know what, you just you threw me wrong. Whatever, it's all good. It's all good. <laughs> but now we know, now we know when people say that they're a social influencer, cause that word is now like a, like a buzzword. Everybody talks right. about he's an influencer, she's an influencer. Right. But like you said, they're, they're an influencer not coming from an authentic place. And I know for sure you are 100% through our conversation. So I appreciate no, you. I, I don't want to diss. I don't want to diss. Like, it's actually a cool title. Like, being yeah. a social influencer is a cool title. But if I had to choose a title, it ain't that. It's like, you know, profitable entrepreneur. Like, yeah. retiring her parents in like two years. You know what I'm saying? It's like, that's the title I want. That's the title I don't care about. But hey. It says profitable entrepreneur. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. Okay. So, going back to the question of how, how do you disconnect in order to reconnect with obviously what's in front of you? So um, we're going to get pretty practical. I have a type A. I'm also highly organized. And I understand that in order for me to grow the business that I want to enhance the lifestyle that I'm working towards, I need to facilitate conversations. But conversations can take a lot of time if it's not focused and it's broken up or a lot of, uh, a lot of different times. So first and foremost, I designate times in the day that I'm on Instagram, I'm on Facebook, I'm on YouTube for business. Because when I'm on there for business, I cannot be scrolling. I cannot be going through my stories, even though I want to. If I'm on there for business, I'm there for business purposes only. And that is to respond to comments, respond to DMs, hop in hashtags, send DMs, start conversations, create videos. I'm there for business. And I've broken that down into about 20 minutes, three times a day. Now, once I do that, anything I can do in bonus of that, like if I'm at, in line at the grocery store, I'm in line at the post office, I got a little early to yoga or Pilates class, I could sit back. Give me four minutes, I can respond to DMs, like five or six DMs, about four minutes. And I think it's gonna be important about maximizing the time you do have. And when you're on the app for business, it's in within a specific um, frame of time, put a timer on, I'm in it for business. And then later on in the day, if you want to surf on your own time for your own like pleasure, awesome, do it. But don't say, I've gone down a rabbit hole, I blame Instagram. No, no, you climbed down that rabbit hole, you didn't do any following, you made the decision. And I'm so glad you said that. I tell all my clients that, you know, we, we, Facebook and social media are great platforms, but we're, we are the platforms, right? We, we are the product. They're, they're not stupid. We're the product. So I do the same thing saying, look, 
15 to 20 minute increments and be intentional. So like put it on your calendar, it's reaching out to, you know, influencers, right? It's going ahead and it's, um, you know, posting on other people's pages, like have, have intent with it. So I'm so glad to hear you, somebody who's crushing it, have the same philosophy and it works, right? It works. You have a, you have a great quality of life and the phone doesn't drag you down, even though social media is your business. Absolutely. Right? And that's, that's great. So slumps, we all get in them and you got to be, you know, perky, you know, and, and, you know, you have to really be positive and it gets hard. Now my energy is always high, but when I do six podcasts or I have coaching calls, I, it kind of comes down a little bit. Um, or sometimes you get a negative call or text message and we get into this slump, this rut, sometimes five minutes, sometimes a day, two days. What does Jasmine do to get out of this slump? Because business has still got to go on. Uh, so what do you do? Well, number one, whenever I feel like I've had like a really tough day or I got a bad piece of news or I just wasn't like living my best life, I, it's important for me to take a moment of gratitude. And I know it sounds ridiculous, but like call me like a granola girl from California. Like I take off my shoes, I sit on the floor, I put my hand over my heart, my hand over my stomach, and I just start listing all the things I'm thankful for. Always at the top of my list, health, because you could be a billionaire. And if you have your health, if you don't have health, you have nothing. Mm -hmm. So health, family, a roof over my head, a car that I love, a dog that loves me. Clearly I'm not starving. I'm eating very well. You know, it's like everything that could happen and the things that matter in your life all of a sudden anchors you and say, okay, the things that matter, I got in check. Now let's focus on the other things. But then in practical terms, I do stuff that's out of the ordinary because what got me here won't get me out of the fog. So I have to think, what can I do right now in this second that's like easy lifting? Does that mean doing something off the Richter scale, like ending work at 2 p.m. and going and watching a matinee of an independent film that's going to make me look at the world or see the world differently? Is it going to make me grab a hard paper book, leave my phone at home, walk 20 minutes, sit, for read 10 minutes, come back? Is it going to be like me picking up my laptop and sitting at the beach? with a frosty beverage, alcoholic or not, and be like, I have to change this. I have to become calibrated, I have to become rooted and understand that in order to get out of the funk, I have to do something so different than what I'm currently doing now. That is gold. I think that honestly, people don't do that enough. And I, right. I'm so, it's, it's so amazing how, you know, what, what we get stuck in our ways and we, like you said, keep trying to do the same thing, getting out of it. And that a lot of people, we don't think about that. That's so good, getting out yeah. of it. Like when you're in a funk, you won't give yourself the permission. Like, let's just say mm. you had a client who canceled or somebody who rescinded or somebody who left like a really bad review. What you think you should do is like, I need to punish myself. I need to work more. I need to do more. I need to prove more. But in, in that time, all the work that you are creating from a place of funk will only look like a bad representation of who you are. We should always be putting out content in our best selves, creating from our best selves. And if we are not our best selves, we must give ourselves the permission to take a little bit of time now to salvage most of the time later. I need to do that sometimes. So thank you. you, know, for that. you know, it, it, it's, it's so true. You know, we, we, we want to deliver so much value and anybody listening to this, if you're an entrepreneur or business owner and you're trying to deliver value through social media platforms or even face to face, I think, I think, you know, we, we do tend to put it out even when we aren't at our best because we don't want to let others down. But in the end, like you said, we drive ourselves down. Give ourselves permission. To, it's, it's okay. That's yeah. great. That's yeah. so good. Um, okay. So what I, obviously, you know, you leaving college and going on this journey and, you know, creating this great life that, you know, you had to create, there's limited beliefs along the way. There had to be. And there's probably still limiting beliefs because I think all of us have them successful or not. It's just us being successful. We just don't live in it. What was one of your biggest living beliefs? Maybe you still have it. And how do you overcome it so my listeners could possibly put that into their life to overcome their limited beliefs? Um, one of the limiting beliefs was uh, very common, like the imposter syndrome. Mm -hmm. Like, who am I to teach this? And I feel like that kind of keeps on coming up at different iterations of my life and career. It's just like when I picked up a camera and I had, didn't even own a camera and I said, I'm going to be a photographer. And then people laughed. And then I created content on how to become a photographer and people laughed. The limiting belief was who am I to be creating this content? And the thing that I want to go back and tell Jasmine of 2006 is that who are you not to create that content? Because there are other people at your level who want to know and learn what you are knowing and learning. So speak to them. 
And I feel like every time it was just like, oh, who am I to speak about business strategy or business consulting? Who am I to be talking about social media? Who am I to be stepping on stages with other people that I really look and admire? And I think to myself, who are you not to do those things? And I feel like whenever I get into that place, there is one objective every time I have a podcast, every time I step on stage, every time I write a blog post or a social media post, I think of one person. My job, me standing in my purpose is to connect with one person. If I change the trajectory of their lives and their decision making to enhance their life and build the business of their dreams, I've done my job. I am not here to be popular. I'm not here to convert 200,000 people to be in my tribe. I'm just like, hey, if you're crazy enough to believe in your crazy dreams and you want to work hard enough and make good decisions and strategize for it, sign up. I'm right here. If not, there's the door. We're good. Yes. Yeah. And, and it, it's so funny how you're talking about it because limited beliefs, you know, you even said it, it still creeps into your mind. Of course. Of course. Uh, if people think that when you become successful, everything's great. Yeah. Right? And, and they don't think about the messiness. They, they, they don't think about the process and that we still deal with a lot of self-doubt. What would you tell somebody? And you may say the same thing, but people may be laughing at somebody because they're trying to be a photographer. They're trying to start a business. And there's always going to be those little chirpers, right? Those whispers and, and the laughs in front of their face, behind their back. Somebody listen to this right now. Somebody's going to need to hear this. On What do you need to tell them right now? If they're trying to start something, and people are laughing and, and, and gossiping about them in a negative way, what would you tell them? I, I saw this, I saw this somewhere and I wish I can give credit to where credit's due, but it was something along the lines of, I used to care about other people's opinions until I tried paying my bills with other people's opinions. <laughs> what we have to know is that people will always talk if we do what we want to do, if we do what we hate, if we somehow never make a decision, people will always talk. They will talk when you're doing good and they will talk when you're doing bad. So my advice to you is do what you want to do, knowing that they will always talk. And you can choose to say, I don't want to do this because I don't want people to talk about me. I hate to break it to you, boo-boo. They're still going to talk about you. So you make the decision to do the dang thing or not. They're still going to talk. Turn them out. Tune them out, keep on walking. Because one day, their gossip, their murmurings are going to turn into, oh, can I buy the thing that you sell? <laughs> what? Oh. Yes, yes, I love it. I feel that the Latin flair coming out, girl. I know. Did you see all my shit in Puerto Rican? I'm talking with my hands. Let me tell yes. you. Hold my earrings. I'm going to send out. Let's go. It's time. Yeah, I'm from Jersey, so. Yeah, <laughs> You know, blood pressure gets up. All of a sudden, we get a little hot. Hands start moving. Exactly. When we get passionate, that means you exactly. give a shit. Honestly, exactly. that's what I love about you. Exactly. Uh, so let's talk about social media. Like that is that is right now. You have, you're just blowing up all over social media. And I, like I said, I love watching your posts. They're like they're just pretty to look at, and they're it's good content behind it, right? Um, it's not fluff. So tell me more about some best practices that my listeners can take advantage of, whether it's Twitter, Facebook. Instagram, give me some of the best practices or mistakes maybe people make. Well, I would talk about the three biggest mistakes, but I, I actually, I hate using the word mistake. Let's talk about the three biggest lessons that we could take away, actionable pieces of advice that people can start implementing today. Yeah. Number one is consistency. And I know that's boring and it's not sexy, but let me just tell from a statistical perspective is that Instagram and Facebook value recency which means that they're looking for content that is the freshest content to show as long as it's an indicated that people are engaging with it. So if you are posting once every six days or all of a sudden you wake up and you're like, oh, I haven't posted on Instagram in two weeks, you cannot complain that nobody's seeing your posts because what algorithms favor, showing up on the daily, responding to people, starting conversations. So number one, lesson to learn is consistency. It is better to show up on the regular than wait for the most perfect viral post that you hope is going to go live because it could be great content, but because you haven't posted anything in a minute, few people are going to see it because you haven't showed up. Keep the audience warm so that when you're ready to drop something hot, it has traction. Boom. Number two, when it comes to learning lessons is that we should be treating social media like a cocktail party on the internet. We need to go in and just the same way. I want you to ask yourself, every time you post a caption, would I say this at a cocktail party? 
honest to God. This is the problem. When I walk in to a brand new person and I'm walking in a room, cocktail party in Jersey, out on the water, and I say, hi, how are you? I sell this. It comes in green. I'm having a sale. I have a pop-up shop walked into my newsletter. I'll send you free three things and then I'll bombard you with some emails after that. Cool. Great. Bye. Go to the next person. Hi, I'm here to sell you. Some of course not. The conversations have to be social. What's your name? What do you do? This is who I am. Really? What do you care about? These are the things that matter to me so that we only in our cocktail hour find people who care about the things that we care about talk the way that we talk and see the world that we see the same way we see the world. Number three, it's going to under, it's going to be to understand, to come from a place of humility and humility is just understanding that every person matters. And if you walk in and say every person matters, you will then cultivate not just customers, you will cultivate evangelists. These are people who not just buy the thing you sell, but tell their friends, tell their family, repost, support you, give you shout outs. My friends, evangelists will take your business to the next level. Being popular may or may not. Yes, let's get it popping, baby. That is progression right there. If you do any of these things, it'll only give you incremental, incremental um, you know, results. So like you said, these three things are crucial. I love it. What I want to ask you is, it's sometimes deep for some people, but... At the end of our day, we got to go up to the white pearly gates, right? We got to see somebody, man, woman, God, whomever it may be. But what do you want that person to say to Jasmine? Oh, well done, my good and faithful servant. <laughs> I, well, I really, really, really would think um, if, I, if God were to look at me and say, did you use the gifts that I gave you? that I could respond with all my heart and integrity. I used every gift you had given me to the best of my ability. If I can say that, then I could drop the mic. <laughs> I think you're gonna drop the mic, girl. Don't worry about that. I'm gonna give you four words, okay? Four okay. words, with the top of your head, like whatever you think of, honest, real, open, let's go. So the first word is fear. Mm, audacity. Mm, failure opportunity success humility hustle empathy i like them You're getting deep with them i love it awesome awesome all right so guys this is the point of the show where if you haven't been taking notes you're absolutely crazy first of all um but if you if you have awesome keep the pen going because this whole show jazz was based on implementable things right not just the fluff and, and the story and the inspiration but Things my audience could take massive, aggressive, annoying action right now to be better today than they were yesterday. So it could be in anything. You give me three things about social media, but any three things that they could implement in their life, their business, relationships, whatever, right now, or actually after the podcast, and they will be better today than they were yesterday. I got my pen and paper. Let's get it popping and let's go. Let's do this. I'm super, I'm just like a hustler. I'm practical. So number one, yeah. things you can do today. Now you have to make the commitment. I today, raise your right hand. I today will be doing these three things. Number one, I am going to leave 10 comments on 10 different accounts that are more than four words. At the same time, yes. I have a question. I'm sorry to interrupt you. Yes. Do emojis count? And do exclamation marks and all the other stuff count? Or is it just words? Well, let's ask, our, let's ask yourself, do you want somebody leaving a string of emojis on your account? No. Okay, then we must give what we want to get. So number one, we're gonna leave 10 comments more than four words that are thoughtful according to that. Now, you could do this a couple ways. People are like, but where do I go? You can go to your followers, right? If you wanna go deep and start converting into customers, people who will follow you are your hottest leads. So you'll go to them, you can go to your follower list or you can hop on a hashtag and you can uh, leave comments for prospective people to come find your account. And at the same time, you're gonna like 10 photos on different accounts. So you're gonna be taking 20 actions on Instagram today, 10 comments, 10 likes. This literally at most should take you about 20 minutes. Second thing that you can do to create action is to reach out to a trusted friend, confidant, a mastermind, ask, what could I do better on my blank, either Instagram account, Facebook page, somebody who you know is gonna deal it to you straight. Because we have to have this reckoning of we can't see ourselves from within ourselves. So somebody else be like, you know what? I think you're posting way too many pictures of your kids. 
And that hurts. You don't want to hear it. And I'm not saying, John, your baby, she's cute. Okay. I'm, I'm, not, saying a lot. <laughs> I'm not saying that. But, but here's the thing. Sometimes some audiences want to see more kids. You, people could say, you know what? You should be posting more of your family because that gets the best engagement. Again, it can cut both ways. So you ask a trusted person. So number one is going to be action. You take an action, giving to others, 10 comments, 10 likes on 10 different posts, 10 to 20 different posts. You're going to ask somebody, a trusted confidant, what could I do better? And thirdly, the thing that I want people to do, and this literally could take as little as 10 minutes, is to write what your version of success looks like six months from now. I'm a big proponent of a year, 10 years. I love that. But six months from now, this is literally us reaching out to the end and beginning of the year. And all you're saying is, I am a success when I am. I don't want to say, I will get this. I hope to get this. It's like you're writing it in present day. At this time, I have these many followers. I'm spending this much time with my daughter. Every morning, I do this. Every week, I am working out this many times. This is what I'm doing. This is how I'm spending my day. When you write it out, our brain becomes hardwired to figure out how can we get what we want. And I want to be realistic. If you have 500 followers right now in six months, I don't want you saying you want 5,000. Because statistics have shown that the average great growth rate of growth on Instagram is 3.5%. So if you have a thousand followers, you're going to be getting about 30 followers a month. So understand that, calibrate your goals, but understand that when you speak your success, it becomes of you and you work towards it. So those three action things can happen today in less than 30 minutes. If you can't do this in 30 minutes today, baby, I'm a question whether or not you want it bad enough. True. <laughs> Oh man, I love it. Ah, and your energy too, Jasmine. I'm telling you, like it is, it is phenomenal. I appreciate it so much. Um, and, and just the realness of it. Guys, like she said, these three things, 30 minutes. Don't wait for the law of diminishing intent to creep its way in. I always say it at the end of every podcast. And that is the longer you wait to do something, the less likely you are to do it. So do it as soon as this thing ends. Man, that was phenomenal, phenomenal, phenomenal. Tell us a little bit more about where they can find you, what you have coming out, any of your products. Let's go. The floor is yours. Okay, so I'm not going to do a pitch, but I'm just going to be real. And I'm going to talk to John the way that I would talk to John outside of this. John told me that he's a member of Social Curator. And he said that he doesn't use all of it, but he uses it as inspiration. And you want to know what I said in my heart? Hell yes. Because so often we care so much about building our business that when it actually comes time to show up online and talk about it, we're tapped out. We're tired. So Social Curator is a monthly social media membership that gives you 30 stock photos every month. Now, you don't have to use the photos. It also gives you a shot list of photos that you could be taking that are representative of your brand. But these are lifestyle-inspired photos. What do you do on the weekends? What do you, how do you spend your holidays? Where do you want to travel? We're getting the social conversation going. Remember, you're at the cocktail party in Jersey by the water. What do you do for the holidays? What are you doing this weekend? We're building that engagement so by the time it comes for you to pitch, you're ready. The captions are fill in the blank, but a lot of times people are looking at this and be like, oh, this is the question I need to ask. Oh yeah, this is how I could pitch my business. And then every month we have an action plan. You want to learn how to use Instagram stories? We'll focus on that one month. You want to learn how to revive your Facebook page? We're going to focus on that one month. So every month you're getting a new marketing topic. That is what it is. And so I hope that it's less of a pitch and instead an invitation to say for $25, come join us inside the community. I teach master classes in there. I do some swift butt kicking. I do some uh, critiques for people in there. I just want to make sure that my community is supported so they feel empowered to do what they love. And John, you are leading the way. So thank you for that. Thank you very much. And where can they find you on social media? What's your handle? All social, Jasmine Star. Jasmine Star. And then the website is just uh, socialcurator.com, right? You can get a link at jasminestar.com or go to mysocialcurator.com. Perfect. And it's going to be in the notes on um, iTunes, Spotify, all the fun stuff. Well, Thank you so much. Is there anything you want to leave the audience with? Any last words of wisdom? Go for it. Um, for so many years, I sat back and I stood on the sidelines watching other people do what they were called to do, wondering if my time would ever come. And the thing that I learned is that the time will never come to me. Time is what I make of it. So for those people who want to pursue it and they're not yet sure, 
first and foremost, understand that you must take the first step before anything comes your way. And secondly, to remind yourself that even though there could be doubters and even though there could be naysayers, the thing you must remind yourself every single morning is number one, I am thankful for what I have. And number two, I am enough that what I am doing, the effort I am exerting, and the passion to show up every single day in this moment is enough. When people know that, they're unstoppable. Yes, yes, and you are enough, that's for sure, and, and you are an amazing guest, and I'm so appreciative to have you, and thank you so much for joining us today. Guys, go follow her, go sign up. I'm, I'm pitching it, girl. Go sign up for Social Security <laughs> Leader. Join me in the group, because I'm a part of it, uh, but it, it's just really, you put out real authentic stuff across the board, so I do appreciate you. But guys, go find out what Jasmine is up to. Go ahead and go to her website and just digest all of her content, and you're going to see why I brought her on uh, more than these last 30 minutes. I could talk to her forever, um, and, and we'll have to do another one soon. But guys, make sure you go follow her, and don't forget to like and subscribe this podcast, but also write a review, not about me, but about something Jasmine had said that maybe helped you make a shift or helped your business Put the review in about Jasmine and about how great, you know, the, the conversation was, whatever it might have been that was aha or breakthrough. And most importantly, share this out. Share this podcast out, this episode to somebody you know that could use social media tactics, could use, I mean, just betting on themselves mindset, whatever it might be, you know somebody that could use this podcast right now. So just take action and send it to them and don't ask for anything in return, but Thank you so much, Jasmine. I appreciate you. And guys, don't forget, follow me at Real John Marone across all social media platforms, johnmarone.com. You want to go ahead and look at any of the programs or talk to me about um, how I can go ahead and speak at your event or just ask me any damn question you want. Make sure you go ahead and follow me and make sure before you do that, you follow my girl, Jasmine, and digest everything she's putting out. She's a beast. She is more than a rising star, and uh, I, I can't wait to continue to build a relationship. Uh, but other than that, that's going to be a wrap. And guys, I'm excited, excited for you guys to know Jasmine at the level. I'm getting to know her um, and take your business to the next level. But until next Tuesday, keep creating the ultimate version of you. See you guys soon.